What's going on, guys? Future Specs here, and we are here today with our first episode of Sleeper Keys with CBSI, and we're really excited. Oh, yeah. And we've got three Sleeper Kang related books for you guys today. And definitely make sure to check out CBSI. The link's going to be down in the description for a fourth extra book for you guys to go check out. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, again, we're here with Sleeper Keys. Wes, tell us what a Sleeper Key is, man. Well, a Sleeper Key is a, a form of spec book that we believe nobody's really talking about, nobody's focusing on, but has a lot of potential to heat up and become wow. bigger than it is right now. Yeah, so it's, it's basically a book that's just being slept on. It's exactly what yep. it um, sounds like, you know? Um, so we're going to be bringing you books that maybe you haven't heard about before. We're going to be really digging in our on the buses and looking for these uh, awesome keys to bring to you guys. So let's get right into it. All right, guys. So first up is my pick. This is Thor 140 from 1967. This is the first appearance of The Growing Man. And you're probably saying, Joey, who is The Growing Man? What is this book? I've never heard of this. How is this related to Kang? Well, Kang actually ordered the Cosmosins. Um, to build him the growing man after like he, they took control of this planet. So Kang, uh, growing man is a robot basically. And so basically what the growing man does is he absorbs energy and when he absorbs energy and when he gets hit, he grows bigger. Who else grows bigger and smaller and that kind of thing? Ant-Man. So, and who else is going to be an Ant-Man? Kang. So this would be a perfect villain for ant-man in part of the movie and then like when a cat like this could easily be one of kang's like cronies um because he starts at this like the same size of ant-man and then he grows so this would be a perfect matchup for ant-man and i'm like i'm very prompted on this book i haven't seen anyone else talk about it and he is you know at pretty much every time growing man appears kang's there with him he has super high yeah. connection to kang i'm very confident on this book and if you want to look at pricing, it's dirt cheap. Look at that, Wes. 9 0 for 150 yeah. 9 0 Silver Age book, 9 0 for 150 bucks. I'll take that any day of the week. And then we go we go to eBay sales there, and it's like for you know uh, mid grade, a little bit higher. It's like 20 25 bucks for like a nice high grade, forty dollars raw. What do you think, Wes? Well, I mean, when you first messaged me and was like, hey, I've got this book, Thor 140, First Appearance of Growing Man, I had no clue what you were talking about or how it could be related. But then you started explaining it, and it makes sense. So I'll grab a $25 raw copy any day. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this book, just it just makes sense for Growing Man to fight Ant-Man because they're both very similar in what they yeah. do, and it would be a great matchup. And obviously, Kang is going to be in Ant Man three. He's going to be the main villain. So, I I have high high expectations that this is going to happen. I really think yeah. it is. So that's why we put it on the list. So yeah, I can definitely see him showing up. Yeah, definitely. And if anything else, it's a nice, just a cool Thor cover and a cool yeah. first, you know, for for again like 150 bucks for an I know, all day long, baby. Okay, so our next book we have is Fantastic Four Annual 25 from 1992. And this is part of a four-issue Kang-related storyline called Citizen Kang, which ran through the annuals of this year. But this book is important because it's the first appearance of Chronopolis, which is Kang's city, his main home base, where he collects everything from all these timelines that he's been in and ruled over. But right. the big part about this book that really makes me think that we can see Chronopolis is, it, well, Kang is going to be a big villain, so it only makes sense. But also in Ant-Man 2, in one of the Quantum Realm scenes, we saw this bubbled city in the background, which I'll put a picture of it up in the video. And it looks very similar to the picture here from the book with the city and the bubble around it. Especially knowing that we're getting Kang in Ant-Man 3. It's like, I, I think it's just, like, that's, it is that. Yeah. Like, you know, it looks exactly like it. And it's, it's just a no-brainer, dude. Yeah. 
And another added bonus for this is it's the first uh, cameo appearance of the Ancronauts, which are like a team of mercenaries that work for Kang and are like the guards of the city. Yeah, this is a great book. And look at the pricing on it, man. It's super cheap. I got my near mint yeah. copy for a dollar. Um, you yeah, can grab my I found a copy in the dollar bin at my store too. It's super yeah. cheap to find. If you want to go off eBay, it's like 15 to 20 bucks for this great Kang book. I mean, and let's talk about this uh, census count too. Yeah, I mean, if you could either find somebody selling a 9-8 or submit your own, even though CGC's times are chaotic right now, but uh, there's not very many. There's only 13 9.8s in existence. So if this yeah. happens and this book starts heating up it could be one of those things where a 9.8 goes for a higher price than it would just because there's so little copies of it exactly and yeah there's only actually 18 total on the census yeah. so if I, dude, I know i'm definitely submitting mine to cgc this is a no-brainer great request. okay and our next one is still part of that citizen kang story we have avengers annual 21 and so this is the first full appearance of the Ancronauts, who we talked about in the last book. But it's also the first full appearance of Victor Timely, who is a variant of Kang, who went back in time and is like this kind of businessman in the town of Timely, which is a reference to Timely Comics, which is what Marvel is called before it was Marvel, which I think that's kind of cool. cool. Yeah. But it's another Kang variant that nobody's really talking about, and you never know what we're, or who we're going to see. So it's got potential to show up. Yeah, man. And this is a double spec. So obviously I'm pretty sure we're going to get the end anchor odds, but then also we're getting Victor timely. Who's a Kang variant. And Kang literally said his variants are coming. Like this just totally yeah. makes sense. it's a double spec. It's super cheap. Wes, let's get into the pricing, man. Tell me about this. Yeah. So this book is really cheap. I mean, I found a copy in my dollar bin at my shop. And it's about the same on eBay, too, with a max of about $4 there. So, I mean, if you can find this book, I definitely say grab it, get at least a couple copies. Yeah. And this another one with the super low uh, census count, only 19 9.8s. Yeah. I mean, 4 bucks, 3 bucks, 2 bucks. I'll buy it all day long, man. Great pick, Wes. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, so that concludes our first episode of Sleeper Keys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos like this. And, of course, go down in the link in the description and check out the CBSI website and check out the fourth pick is on CBSI, yeah. written by yours truly. <laughs> go check it out. It's really good. I really like that pick. It's another Kang variant. Um, but, yeah, yeah, if you guys like this video, peace. See ya.